My name is Olorogun Theodore Ochiko Areki. I'm here to tell Nigerians that as a new day is dawning, dawning away from the suffering and hardship we are going through in Nigeria, there is certainly new hope and fresh courage. So, as a matter of urgency, we should change the narrative and the trajectory of Nigeria and right the wrong from where it all started. Lord Frederick John Dutry Lugard. You recall from history that Lord Frederick Lugard, the first Governor General of Nigeria between 1914 and 1919, vehemently refused to train Nigerians because he preferred to use Nigerians as slaves and any education will be contrary and against the objective for which he was ruling. Rather, he put worms in places, worms that have eaten deep into our system. But how do we get rid of all these worms who are either still worms amongst us or they have morphed and probably become butterflies? This is where the root of Nigerian problems over these years lies. 62 years problems to be precise. Ask me how and I'll tell you. When Chief Anthony Erumosele Enahoro asked for independence from the British in the British House of Commons in Lagos in 1953 because they as youths at the time wanted a new Nigeria, the British told us clearly without mincing words that we were not ready for independence and the reason they gave was that we were not trained enough to manage or rule ourselves 62 years and counting and we have clearly and in no iota of doubt managed to demonstrate and prove the british right now with this new hope and fresh courage our youths are rising up to the challenge of a new nigeria again like in 1953 but wait a minute are they really ready? Have we been trained enough to support the new president of this new Nigeria that is coming? Quite frankly, this new president cannot do it alone. Just like the few educated Nigerians at the time in, 19, in the 50s who couldn't do it. People like Chief Enahoro, Chief Azikiwe, Chief Awolowo, Alaji Tafa Balewa, Chief Okotiebo, etc. They couldn't do it because they needed a chunk of Nigerians trained as well. This new president needs as a matter of urgency a huge majority of young Nigerians who are properly trained, trained in the way things are done, trained in governance, trained in best practice procedures. And I mean at least three quarters of Nigerians trained in this new Nigeria to be created. I don't mean educated. I mean trained in mind, body and soul on best practice procedures for instance. The road traffic system is used in countries to train people's mind on patience so that when your light is red you wait and when your light is green you go. We need such systems to develop our mindsets, the mindsets of Nigerians, mindset training. In America for instance there is a stop sign, I don't mean traffic sign, just a board a stop sign on every crossroad. If you get there first, you stop, even if there are no vehicles. And anyone who comes after you, it doesn't matter what direction they come from, they also stop. And you that got there first, you go first. Anyone who jumps that queue and goes before you who got there first will be arrested by the police. Simple, simple mindset changing systems. We need Nigerians trained with this sort of systems. We want to get it right this time after nearly 62 years of independence. Get it right one for all and all for one. Now let's reminiscence a bit. Let's go back a little. In addition to not training Nigerians, Lord Lugard created a master-servant relationship between themselves, the colonial masters and Nigerians. He also created reserve residential areas for the white masters called government reserve areas GROAs. In those days, if you saw a Nigerian in those areas, he or she is either going to work or coming back from work because they don't live there. But in England, where Lord Lugard comes from, there are no government reserve areas for any government worker as they all live together as one brothers and sisters. No slaves, no masters. As a matter of fact, the people in power, the politicians, are the servants serving the people who voted them into power. So what has happened 
after they gave us independence is that our brothers and sisters, that is the politicians, who took over from the white masters, moved into the shoes of their predecessors, the white masters, and continued the master-slave relationship, even though we are brothers and sisters. This practice is still what you and I see in Nigeria today. We want to end this 62 year streak of hopelessness. So we must be trained, prepared physically and mentally. We must change our mindset in this new Nigeria that is coming. Let us, every one of us, train ourselves in preparedness on how to develop ourselves, on production, on how things work, and on how to do things. Now, no matter the condition, good will always win over evil. You know why? Peter Obi is not politics. Peter Obi is a movement. Movement from these 62 years to fresh new courage and fresh new hope. I know people are obligated and dedicated to their political parties, but this, my brother, is not partisan politics. This, my sister, is not partisan politics. This is the emancipation of our dear country from 62 years of doldrum. Let's not repeat history. Let's make history. 2023 is pivotal to this historic tsunami. I'm not going to say vote wisely as many people do. I'm saying vote Peter Obi. And I say that again, vote Peter Obi. And as we do so, let's be mindful of what Chief Anthony Enahoro wanted in the 50s. They wanted a new Nigeria. So let's create this new Nigeria now, today. Let's be truly ready and prepared for this new Nigeria. Don't kill a Nigerian. Train a Nigerian today. God bless you and God bless Nigeria. As usual, don't forget to smash the like button on your screen. Subscribe to this channel so we can continue to make videos like this for you. And most of all, share this video with your friends and families. Thank you for watching.